company uses my phone number on their receipts, so I decide to become that company to get revenge. Here's what happened. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit the bell for notifications. Quite some time ago, my girlfriend and I, now wife of more than 15 years, moved in together and had to set up all the things. Cable, internet, phone, etc. We got our home phone number, our two cell phones, and we're off to the races. Almost immediately, we start getting calls for an establishment that does custom framing and other various art-related things. Let's call them Expo for Art. Of course, we had caller ID and we had friends that would call us, but inevitably, if we didn't recognize the number, it was someone wanting to find out if their order was complete, or their frame was done, of what their hours were, or any of a thousand other questions. I'm sure anyone else who has had this happen would recognize the exchange. So Sorry, that's no longer their number, this is residence. Yes, I'm sure. No, I'm not giving you my address. No, I don't know their new number. Yes, I have a phone book, but so do you. Eventually, after a thousand of these and changing the message on our answering machine to say, this is not, I repeat, not Expo for Art. If you're trying to reach Expo for Art, please hang up, look up their number, and try that, because we aren't them. Eventually, I got my gazillionth call and I asked the person on the other end of the line where they kept getting this number. Well, it's printed on my receipt. I guess I'll just call this other number. Any chance you can give me that one? Thanks. I call it. Hello, Expo for Art. You guys are still giving out my home phone number on your receipts. Yeah, so? Well, stop it. It's been at least a year since you haven't had that number. At least cross it out or something. Ugh, that's such a pain. I'm not making any of my employees do that. So you're the manager? I'm the owner. So let me see if I have this right. You, what was your name again? Let's call him Fred. You, Fred, have decided that it's too inconvenient to cross my home phone number off of your receipts, so you're just going to keep giving it out? Yup. What are you going to do? Sue me? Maybe. Whatever. I've got things to do. Bye. I called a lawyer, but didn't really have a leg to stand on. I went to the store and asked for Fred. Uh, Fred's not here. He's hardly ever here, really. You want me to call him? No, I'm fine. I know this is going to sound odd, but is there any chance I can see one of your receipts? She picks up a receipt book and shows it to me, and sure enough, it's got my phone number at the top, above another one. I say, I thought so. I couldn't get you at the other number. Some guy yelled at me, and I didn't have my old receipt, so I had to come down here. We We've been having that happen a lot, ever since Fred decided we didn't need two phone lines. But he just bought like 20 boxes of these receipt books and business cards and he's too cheap to buy more until they run out. I'd hate to be that guy. Yeah, that's gotta suck. So I went home and hatched my evil plan. Next phone number I didn't recognize. Hello, Expo for Art. Hi, this is Mary Smith. I dropped off a thing last week to be framed. Is it ready? Oh, let me check. Yep, we finished it this morning. I hope you don't mind, but we decided to upgrade the matting because of the weight of the piece. It's the same color and won't be charging you for it since it was my decision. Oh, thank you. I'll be down to pick it up later today. What time do you close? I looked down at my business card with my number and the hours clearly marked 11 to 4. Oh, take your time. We'll be here until 7. Oh, thank you so much. Can you tell me how much that was? $11.99, ma'am, plus tax. So $21.39. Well. Oh, that's cheap. Are you sure? Of course. If anyone has a problem, tell them you talk to Fred. Okay, I'll see you around six. See you then. Thank you for calling Expo for Art. For weeks, I kept giving out completely random information. How much is a 36 by 48 matted frame? Let's say $25. Wow, that's cheap. How much to have it done custom how they want it? Custom is an extra 10, so 35. Wow, that's cheap. I'll be right down. What was your name? Fred. See you in 10, Fred. How much to have the entire front page of the New York Times from 9-11 mounted and framed? $33.99, unless you want our special proprietary newspaper frame and mat service. Only $49.99 and guaranteed for life. Only at Expo for Art. Tell them Fred sent you. I can only imagine the number of people who showed up to pick up orders that weren't ready and when they finally got there were given a price way higher than what Fred had told them over the phone. Eventually, someone let slip that they called the number on the receipt and that's what Fred told them. Fred was not happy. Thank you for calling Expo for Art. This is Fred. You're not Fred. I'm Fred. Are you trying to put me out of business? Why, Fred, what do you mean? Someone has been giving prices to my customers and telling them their orders are ready when they're not due for weeks. Well, Fred, who called them? 
Nobody called them, they called us. Then what's the problem? If someone called you and got pricing information, that would seem to be your problem. They didn't call me, they called you. Well, how would that happen? Your number is on my receipts and business cards. My, my. It seems there's a very simple solution here. Take my number off your receipts and business cards. Do you have any idea how much promotional materials cost? Is it more than it costs to do these jobs for the prices you're quoting? Is it more than it costs to lose customers? Or less than that? This is extortion. Call it what you want, Fred. The choices and consequences are entirely up to you. A week later, Hello, Expo for Art. This is Fred. I've ordered new receipts and books and cards. Can you please stop doing this? Sure. Bye, Fred. So, was I being a jerk? I don't think they were being a jerk at all. It's up to that business to be able to take care of this kind of thing and change their materials if their number changes. It's certainly not your fault as some random person who's getting all these calls for a business that isn't yours. You then brought it to his attention and he chose to be the jerk about it. You didn't do anything wrong, really. You just kind of messed with him a little bit. And he had it coming. If you were some 14-year-old kid, they would have done the exact same thing. It's almost just a prank. But this guy knew exactly why it was happening and how to prevent it and didn't want to. I feel like the owner took that risk as soon as he decided he didn't want to be the one to remove that number from his business materials. And then to turn it around and call it extortion is just plain inaccurate as far as I know. Extortion would be, hey, you need to pay me money or I'm going to continue to do this, which our original poster never did at any point. He was not gaining anything from this financially. He just wanted the calls to stop. And honestly, who can blame him? At least Fred has got everything sorted out now. Client demands to speak to my manager because I can't legally tell him his own password. Some backstory, I do end user implementation, training, and support for a web application that was developed by my firm. Our clients tend to skew a little older. Client. I can't get into my account. My login isn't working. This is ridiculous. I've been trying for hours and now I'm locked out. Me. Oh, my apologies for any inconvenience. I've just reset your password. You should receive an email with a link to set it and save a new password in a moment. Client. I don't want a new password. I like my old password. It's the same password I use for everything else and it's easy to remember. Me. My sincere apologies, but you will need to set a new password in order to gain access to your account. Client. Can't I just use my old password? Me. No, our data security standards do not allow that. However, if for any reason you aren't able to follow the password reset link, I would be happy to generate a random password for you and share it with you over the phone. Client. Do that then and email the password to me. Me. Again, my apologies, but part of our security policy states that we cannot email passwords in plain text. I would be happy to give you a call and share your password with you over the phone. Client. Why are you being so difficult? I just want my old password to work again. Me. Sir, I'm so sorry that this process has been frustrating for you. I want you to have access to your account. Have you followed the link in the password reset email? Customer. No, it looks like a virus. I don't want to click on it. Me. I can assure you that it is not a virus. It's a hyperlink. You can just click on it and it'll open a page in your browser where you can reset your password. Client. That's ridiculous. That's so much work. Why do you make it sound so hard? This should be simple. I want to speak to your manager. Me, eager to pass them off to someone else at this point. No problem. My manager is CC'd. He'd be happy to assist you. Manager. How can I help? Customer. Your employee is rude, stupid, and not helpful. I just want to log in. I don't want to reset my password. I don't want to click on this virus she sent me. And this is taking forever. It's ridiculous. Manager. Sir, respectfully, we're going to need you to meet us halfway and change your password. Client, in all caps, this is via email. This is bull. I don't want to change my password. You're all idiots. Manager. Again, we're sorry that this is frustrating for you. Please let us know what we can do to help. The manager CCs the client's boss, the director of their organization, and the one whose signature is on the contract. My manager doesn't take anything from clients. Client's boss to their employee with us CC'd. Are you serious? These nice people are doing everything they can to help you, and you're abusing them and belittling them? This is an embarrassment to our organization. You owe them both an apology 
and you need to reset your password, stop complaining, and log in and get me that report that was supposed to be on my desk yesterday. The fact that you've wasted your entire day on this is ridiculous, and this will definitely be included in your performance review. My manager and I were in tears. Client's boss was savage AF and did not pull a single punch. The client did end up resetting his password, but did not apologize. Last time I sent out an email to clients, his bounced. I think he got fired. So was I the jerk in this situation? I don't think so. You were just trying to do your job and had someone who just didn't want to follow the instructions you were giving them. People don't seem to understand that customer service is just that, customer service. They're there to help you, but you have to help them help you. You need to be willing to do what they're saying so that you can get the end result that you're asking for. They're there telling you how to do it. All you have to do is follow along. Honestly, it just kind of sounds like this guy didn't want to do any work that day and decided to make this a bigger problem than it needed to be. No fault at all in the original poster here. My cousin doesn't believe in vegetarianism. So my cousin is a total Kevin. He doesn't believe in vegetarianism. At Christmas 2019, my mom brought a mixed salad for the extended family, mostly the ants. My one aunt is a vegetarian. You might see where this is going. The whole family sits down and my aunt's plate consists of only salad, green beans, and some of my grandma's famous mashed potatoes. As we begin to eat, my cousin looks up at my aunt and asks, So why didn't you get any of the turkey or ham I brought? She looked at him strangely. Because I'm a vegetarian? Kevin had a confused look on his face. But you're eating plants. My aunt looks even more confused. Plants are vegetables. Kevin gives her the most narcissistic smirk and says, No, they're not. They're meat. The whole family looks at Kevin, who's looking like he just told a child Santa isn't real. My uncle chimes in, Uh, Kevin, plants are vegetables, not animals. They don't contain meat. Well, they're alive, aren't they? So that means they're animals. We tried to explain to him that just because they're alive doesn't mean they're animals. Are trees animals, Kevin? Huh? No, trees aren't alive. We gave up after 45 minutes of arguing and went to open presents. Can you believe this jerk? This one is, um, interesting. We don't seem to have an age in the original post, but I'm very curious how old this person is. It seems to be implied that they're an adult. And I think we've all had those moments where you realize later in life that you should have that something that you thought wasn't correct all along, but this feels like a rather large one to be wrong about. I'm curious how this person got to this point in life still thinking this. Not only that, but the fact that he's so smug about thinking that he's right is just hilarious to me. At the end of the day, maybe we should just take this as a lesson to always be humble and remember that everyone else knows something that you don't. Something that you might think to be correct, no matter how sure you might be, you still need to be willing to question. If this guy had maybe been a little less confident in what he thought was correct, he could have avoided a lot of embarrassment. As it is, it sounds like he continued to argue his point until everyone else just kind of gave up. So some people you just can't get through to. I can't believe my family didn't get my kids anything for Christmas. I married into a wealthy family. My family is lower middle class, so it was quite a change. I have two kids, six-year-old girl and four-year-old boy, that more or less get anything that they want. But they aren't spoiled. Anyways, we decide to spend Christmas with my family. And the day before Christmas, since my dad worked the actual day, my mom calls all the kids to the tree for presents and did her usual, you guys were so good and that's why Santa gave you all these things speech. After that, all of them quickly found theirs, but my two kids kept searching and couldn't find anything. My son was on the verge of tears and my daughter was quiet after the tree was cleared and they were left with nothing. I asked my mom what was going on and my mom looked at me, then at my kids and went, Oops, I thought you knew. We all decided we weren't buying them Christmas gifts. I asked her why and she said that they get more than they need from me and my in-laws and that they all collectively decided to spend more on those that need it. She looked at my son who had tears running running down his face and said, See, look how spoiled he is. This is good for them. She then walked away. I quietly went back to the guest room and packed our things. I then called my husband who had offered to go grab my mom something from Walmart and told him to leave the stuff and come pick us up. We then left quietly after I let my dad know. He was disappointed but said he understood. We managed to cheer the kids up and visited my in-laws instead. A while later, I got a call from my mother. She kept asking me why I disappeared like that and said she 
was waiting for the stuff my husband was bringing from Walmart. I told her very politely that I didn't like what she did to my children and that she or literally anyone else could have at least told me. My mom said I was acting very entitled for someone who goes on multiple vacations a year. She then brought up my son crying again. I got peeved and told her that the reason he cried is because of her stupid speech about only good kids getting presents. My mom then randomly said that maybe he isn't a good kid if he cried like that over not getting toys. We argued back and forth over this, but I ended up saying that she's very lucky I didn't snatch back the gifts I bought for my nieces and nephews. My mom just said, the entitlement, before hanging up. My sister texted me the same thing, and my other sister said that I'm playing the victim when the real victims are them and their kids. My mom sent a similar text as well. Am I the jerk? Honestly, this one just leaves a really bad taste in my mouth because the real victims here are her kids, who are only six years and four years old. They think they did something bad and that that's why they didn't get any presents. Surely the adults in the family understand that this is what the kid is going to think if you don't get them anything and get everyone else something, especially when you point it out immediately before. I think the original poster handed herself very well in this situation. She definitely could have made a scene about this and wouldn't have been wrong to do so, but she chose to quietly let it go, and that's very big of her. I feel like the adults in this family need to sit down and have a conversation and realize that kids are kids and don't understand this type of thing, and to punish them for something like this is just not fair at all. My old friend invites me to her wedding only to try and embarrass and insult me. I was invited to be part of my friend's wedding. Our culture doesn't have the usual bridesmaid bridesgroom thing, but close friends of the bride and groom usually help out. The bride Alicia and I go way back. We've been friends since high school and have been through a lot together. However, my relationship with her hasn't always been the best, and she was essentially a mean girl in school and treated me terribly. We both were part of a group of six and they all made me the scapegoat for all their mean jokes, comments, and amusement. I was trolled for being tall and chubby. They would treat me and talk to me like I was a guy and it seriously hurt my self-esteem for a long time. However, the reason I put up with it back then was because I didn't have any other choice and they were always there when I needed help, which made it easier to brush off their behavior. I have been low contact with them for a while now and haven't seen any of them in person for at least a year. This has helped me gain some confidence. I've lost weight and feel more comfortable wearing short clothes. Alicia contacted me a while ago to ask me to be in her wedding. I hesitated at first, but she insisted and expressed how important it was to her that I be there. So I agreed and we all met up. In the first few minutes of meeting up, Alicia expressed how shocked she was at how much I'd changed. She said that she'd seen my pictures on social media, but assumed that I'd been photoshopping them like I used to in school in order to look slim. Two other friends nodded their approval and said they thought the same thing. Then, Alicia says that she's really surprised that I actually look like a girl. This kind of hurt, but I calmly replied telling her that I am a girl. She just laughed and said that I'd always be a boy to her because no matter how much weight I lost, she'd still be more petite due to the height difference. As if this wasn't enough, she turned towards one of the guys from our group and asked him for his opinion on this. He chuckled and said she's still the small and cute one. I somehow swallowed all this down and tried to proceed further by changing the topic, but Alicia would not let me. She kept passing comments on my gender identity, body type, and style of dressing. I finally snapped when she she told me that she expected me to wear a suit to her wedding instead of a dress. There is no way I was doing that and I made that clear, but she was adamant, saying that it was her wedding and she wanted me to adhere to her vision. She said that she liked that I was different in school and wore men's clothes and my new style really threw her off, so she just wanted to fondly remember the old days by having me dress up like a boy. I could not believe how mean and ridiculous she was being, so I told her to count me out and promptly walked out. Out. Since then, the entire group has contacted me to tell me that I'm being unnecessarily stubborn and hurting Alicia. Am I the jerk? Honestly, to me, this just sounds like an issue of straight up bullying. And the bullies don't even realize that they're doing it because they think they're friends. Sadly, this happens a lot more often than I think a lot of people think. 
Friends tend to poke fun at each other and they think that this stuff is okay, but they don't realize the lasting effect that something like this can have, especially if it's something that you keep going to, poking at the same place over and over again. It can really start to get to people. I don't think the poster's being a jerk at all for not accepting this behavior. This is a social event that you're asking them to attend for you and you want to embarrass them there. She doesn't want to be there to be embarrassed. She wants to be there to support you. Actually, it sounds like she didn't even want to be there to do that either, but only agreed because you kept asking. Then she shows up and finds out it's because you wanted to play a joke on her? Why would she want to agree to that? Who can blame her? This is one of those situations where from the outside looking in, it's very clear who's in the wrong. But for the parties involved, they might not see the immediate issue. They really need to take a step back and listen to what they're saying and understand how it's affecting this person that they call their friend. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, give Am I the Genius a shot, linked in the description too. Either way, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.